So this album is like nothing we've ever heard before from Taylor Swift. I have two questions. Why is that and why now? I think for me it's uh, really important to constantly challenge yourself. And also, uh, I think you have to keep people's attention by surprising them. But as far as my musical direction goes, I would always like to keep people on their toes in that regard. I think that's the best way to be exciting. Are you worried about bruising feelings in Nashville? I'm not, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I think that on my last album, when the song I Knew You Were Trouble came out and spent seven weeks at number one on the pop charts, that was kind of like a warning flare. I, I love that direction. And so for this album, I, I don't think that people were surprised that I went in the direction of pop. I think people were surprised that I was honest about it. But was there a part of you that was nervous about it? Because I remember reading that your record label said, can we at least have one, two, three country songs on this album? Um, it felt like it would be exploiting an entire genre just because I didn't want to ruffle feathers. I also, f a big goal of mine was to make this album very sonically cohesive. Uh -huh. So if I were to put a fiddle on a version of Shake It Off and service it to country radio, mm -hmm. I, that would have completely shattered the entire idea I had that this album was going to have its own sound. Shake it off, shake it off. Players gotta play, 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 play. Hayers gotta hate, 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 hate. So the question is, what is Taylor Swift shaking off? What is that? It means different things to different people. It does, and that's my favorite thing about this song. I wanted to make a song that would help people get through their day. All these girls that I talk to online, on Instagram or Tumblr or Twitter, the things that they're going through, are parallel to what I go through, just on a different scale. When someone spreads a rumor that isn't true about a girl I'm talking to on Instagram, it's the same feeling of humiliation that I get when I'm checking out of the grocery store and I see something untrue written about me on a magazine. I'm, I'm curious about that, that feeling. How do you handle it? Because you're in the tabloids a lot. I think I probably handle it the same way that you handle it, which is you just laugh at it Yeah. at a certain point. I do now, but I didn't in the beginning. That's exactly uh -huh. how it was for me. Uh -huh. You start off and you're very personally offended by it and you're wounded by it. And you think it's personal and really, it's honestly a money thing. You know, and a lot of times in your music you write about your life and the song that I just heard, Blank Space. Tell me what that means to you. That song started out as a joke. I wrote it uh, from the perspective of just kind of uh, being very well aware of the things that have been said about my personal life in the last couple of years. Which, You're a serial dater. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so seeing that kind of take place and um, seeing how much these, these media sites were just reveling in it. I mean, they loved it. Just like, look at the slideshow of Taylor's ex men mm -hmm. and it was like I'd look at that you know if you click on it it drives you crazy because you're like I don't even no, know man. half of them and yeah. that was one time that we went to lunch <laughs> yes. and we were friends or whatever yeah. we went to dinner and that was it but basically after I was irritated by it I kind of became amused by it mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if I separate myself from it it's actually a pretty complex character. <laughs> yeah. And she's actually kind of exciting and interesting. You know, watching Taylor Swift walk around New York has almost become a pastime for a lot of people. And I wonder what that's like for you. Because no matter where we see you, you were always so well put together. Thank you. There's something about New York that makes me want to dress up for it, uh -huh. which is this strange, unexplainable thing. But also, when you have 20 paparazzi outside your apartment, it kind of makes you take ownership of how you look and you know it's gonna be documented and discussed and debated and so you just kind of take two extra minutes to match your shoes with your purse and you're golden. There was a thing about your fans, that you had them over for a listening party and you bake cookies and all that stuff for them. I know people always say they love their fans, but there really is something special about you and your fans. Well, we have a lot in common. That's the thing. But Theo, you go above and beyond the call of duty. You have them over to your house and you're baking cookies. Who does that? Well, it, it sounds like it doesn't make sense, but it just does in this scenario. Like, I love to surprise them. And in this case, it's that I handpicked hundreds of fans for these listening sessions and invited them over because I'm so wildly excited about this album, I needed them to hear it first. I read in the Rolling Stones article that she's protecting her heart like a fortress, and I thought, boy, I hope that's not true. I hope that your heart is still open to all possibilities. 
I'm protecting my happiness like a fortress. Mm -hmm. It's a very different thing. Mm -hmm. And when I tell people how happy I am to be alone and to be living my life on my own terms and to be free and independent and empowered, the first thing they say to me is, oh, don't worry, you'll find someone. Yeah. And that is so not the point. We read about your friendships with very famous people. What makes a good girlfriend for you? A good girlfriend for me is someone who is an individual. Also, none of my friends are gonna get mad at me if we don't talk for two weeks. What makes a, a good boyfriend? Oh, I haven't figured it out yet.